Hi, everybody. It's very nice to be here. Uh, my name is Dr. Charles Brown. I'm a professor of applied linguistics and English education at Meiji Gakuin University in Tokyo, Japan. Um, I'm also a specialist in second language vocabulary acquisition and director of what's called the New General Service List Project. The New General Service List Project is a collection of the best word lists in the world to help second language learners to succeed. Now, how is that possible? That has to do with a mathematical principle known as Ziff's Law. We'll talk more about the new General Services Project and Ziff's Law in a few minutes. But to begin with, I want to go back to 1985 when I first arrived in Japan. In those days, I wasn't a professor of linguistics. I was just an assistant language teacher. I was untrained, and my job was just to visit Japanese junior and senior high schools and to assist with the teaching of English. But even as an untrained teacher, I became aware very quickly of a problem, and you can see the problem over here. This is a second year high school English textbook, and you can see lots of writing underneath the difficult words. Um, I saw this kind of thing everywhere I went. Uh, Japanese students would struggle with the difficult texts and they would write down the definitions underneath all of the words. And as I looked closer at these texts, I thought, wow, I'm a native speaker of English. This text is hard for me. So how the heck are they understanding these texts? And the simple answer is they weren't. To make matters worse, teachers would always tell their students, please don't use your dictionaries. Just try to guess from context. But that is actually harder than it looks. The number one most popular book in the world for second language learners of English is Harry Potter. It's one of my favorites as well. What you are seeing here is chapter one of book one, the first three paragraphs of Harry Potter, The Boy Who Lived. You can see 80% of the words. All the rest of them are red blanks. Please guess from context. Can you do it? Absolutely not. It's almost impossible. 80% is not enough. But look what happens at 90%. The number of red blanks becomes much, much less. There's a lot more context, and this is the point where more and more students will be able to read once they know 90% of the words on the page. And look at 97%. At 97%, now you can see almost all of the words. So many years later, when I went and I started studying about vocabulary and reading, I became aware of uh, what's called vocabulary threshold research. And what we know now, um, the science tells us that if students know less than 80% of the words on the page, reading is basically mission impossible. It is impossible to understand a text if you know less than 80% of the words. But at 90%, that's the level where more and more students will finally be able to read and understand the text. And at 95%, almost everybody will be able to read and guess from context. There's one more important threshold. That's the reading for pleasure threshold. And to be able to read something and enjoy it, you need to know at least 98% of the words on the page. So what I said is that a minimum of 90% is required to read and understand a text. Let's go back to that first text that I showed you. If you count up all of the words that have writing underneath them, that student only understood 79% of the text. That means that it is frustration level. That means it is reading as mission impossible. So what's the solution? That's what we've been working on for the past 12 years. What we're trying to do is to create word lists to get students above 90% as quickly as possible. 
But before I tell you about our word list, I want to tell you about another word list. We have to go back in time more than 90 years to um, look at the general service list. This is a list made by Michael West and his colleagues. It's a corpus-based list. And this was in the age where there was no computers. So they made a big corpus of English and they had to count every word, not by computer, but by hand. It was an amazing, amazing list. And the 2,200 words in that list gave 80% coverage. When I became a professor and I found out about this list, I immediately began teaching those words to my students. Some of the words were really, really good, but one thing I noticed quickly is that the list was starting to get dated. It was starting to get old. The general service list was supposed to be the words that students will see in their daily life, here and there, everywhere in their daily lives. But there were a whole bunch of agriculture words, sea travel words, religion words, all kinds of words that maybe 100 years ago were very popular, but not in 2024. So the list needed to be updated, and that's what we started to work on. We had three goals. One was to make a much more modern corpus of English, so the word list was much more modern. The second goal was to make the corpus much, much bigger so that the words were more accurate. And the third goal is that the old list was only 80% coverage. We wanted a minimum of 90%. And so in 2013, we published the new general service list. And the new general service list is a much more modern corpus, more than 100 times bigger than the original, 2,809 words and 92% coverage for most texts of general English. Remember the 97% slide for Harry Potter? That's how much you would understand if you knew the new general service list. So the new general service list is giving very good coverage for general English in daily life. But it's been out for about 10 years, and now researchers around the world are starting to use this word list to test, is it good in other situations? And the news is quite good. For example, if you look at the Japanese National Center Test, the test that students have to pass to get into college, the NGSL covers 95% of that test. The high school entrance exam in Japan, just the first 1,000 words of the NGSL, 98% coverage. And those horrible, difficult Ministry of Education approved textbooks, the latest textbooks, 93 to 96% coverage if you know the new general service list. Pretty amazing, right? Now, how is this possible? This brings us back to what I was talking about before, Ziff's Law. Now, I'm a linguist, and most linguists hate math. But this little bit of math is remarkable because this is what makes it possible for us to make great word lists. Ziff's Law was created by George Ziff, who was a mathematician, and basically what it states is that frequency decreases with rank. More precisely, frequency is inversely proportional to rank. You got it? Probably not. I'm a linguist, neither do I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you visually. And after I show it to you visually, I think you will understand Ziff's Law. Do you know what the most frequent word of the English language is? It's the word the, which I've just said several times. If you know the word the, that is 6% of all the words you will ever see on any book, page, any page of a book or magazine or newspaper. 6% of those words are the word the over and over again. If you were to study just the top 10 words of the new general service list, it would be 30% of the words on the page. If you knew the top 100 new general service list words, almost 60%. The top 1,000, 82%. And the whole new general service list, 92% coverage. That's pretty amazing, but 
it's even more amazing when you look at this compared to the size of the whole English language. The whole English language has 600,000 words. So to get from 92% to 100%, that last 8%, you would have to study 597,000 more words. So if you're a student of English, or if you're a teacher of English, which do you want to focus on? Do you want to focus on studying 597,000 blue words and get only 8%? Or just less than 3,000 red words and get 92%? That's Zipf's law. It's amazing. Basically what it's saying is these high frequency words are everywhere in our daily lives over and over again. These are essential core words that we need to learn. So once we published that in 2013, we thought, hmm, I wonder if we can do the same thing, not just for general English, but for other kinds of English as well. And over the past 11 years, we have published eight other word lists. We've published word lists on spoken English, children's English, business English, TOEIC English, academic English, many different kinds of English. All of the word lists are very, very short. Most of them are 1,000 to 2,000 words long, and all of them are giving 90% or higher coverage. That line that says 30,000, that's how many words a college-educated native speaker knows. So these lists are very short, both compared to the size of the whole English language, but even compared to just the size of a native speaker. So these are very, very efficient uh, starting points. Now, as a professor of applied linguistics, one of the things universities want us to do is to publish academic papers in academic journals. To tell you the truth, it's the last thing in the world I wanted to do because nobody reads those journals. What we wanted to do with the new general service list is to make sure that these lists got to students and teachers and textbook writers. So the first thing we did was to make a website, newgeneralservicelist.com. And if you go to that website, you can download all of our word lists, definitions for all of the words. There's free online learning tools, online teaching tools, online testing tools. Uh, there's text analysis tools, a very cool video concordance tool, which I'll show you in a moment. We have an AI-powered text creation tool. There are many things on the website, and on the website, everything is open source and completely free. Now, what I'd like to do just with the last few slides is to show you a few of these tools. The first thing I want to show you is our interactive learning dictionary. It's just a dictionary, but with a twist. On the right side, you can see the definitions that we've written in very easy English for students. Next to that, there's a whole bunch of icons. Those are direct links to many other dictionaries around the world, many famous dictionaries. Under pronunciation, you can click on any word and you will get authentic pronunciation, not by a computer, which is very common these days, but by native speakers from around the world. You can hear any NGSL word pronounced in American English, British English, Australian English, and so on. On the left side, um, you can see a column with, that's HTML links in blue. If you click on any word, you'll instantly be brought to our video concordance. That gives the students authentic examples of the word being used in real authentic videos. Let me show you an example. This is the NGSL word always. You know, I always say it's interesting. I've been in the business for 50 some years and... The possibility of something better is always, always there. And that we are always adding in a little more flour and a little more water. So this is just three examples of the word always being used, but you can see there's thousands of examples for every word. Learning English from authentic context is much better than learning just from a simple flashcard. So this is one of the cool tools that we have. 
we've also tried to think about uh, different games that can help students to learn vocabulary to increase their motivation and confidence. Crossword puzzles, for example, are a very good way to practice vocabulary, so we've created an automatic generator of crossword puzzles for all of our word lists, and students can practice. If they're having difficulty, they can get hints. It's very simple, but it makes learning a little bit more interesting. Wordle is a game that was invented about five years ago, and it's a free game that's been going around the world very, very popular for practicing vocabulary. So we thought, let's make an NGSL version. And so students can play this game and practice their knowledge of new general service list words. One of the other tools that I, I just released about a month ago is our NGSL text analysis tool. How do we know that Harry Potter gets 97% coverage by the new general service list? That is the text analysis tool. You just copy and paste a bit of text into the tool, push the button, it will tell you what coverage, how easy or how difficult the text is instantly. Now, back to this picture. This is a picture of Michael West drawn by his wife, and this is showing those guys hard at work during that 17-year span where they were creating the word list, improving the word list, innovating, trying to make the best word list in the world for second language learners. That word list helped people around the world for almost 60 years. It's a little bit old right now, and that's why we tried to make a new word list. And our hope is that with the new general service list project, we've been working on it for about 12 years now, and our hope is that for another 60 years to come, we will be able to help students and teachers and textbook writers and so on to succeed in learning English. Thank you very much.